Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. In today's video, we are going to go over 10 crucial things that one of our analysts has learned from over 10,000 hours of playing League. On average, they've been playing League every single day for a few hours per day since Season 1, and they're here to impart their wisdom onto you guys. For today's question of the day though, what's kept you playing League for as long as you've been playing for? For me, it really has much to do with how much variety there is in this game, and it always feels like there's something to improve on or learn considering how much content is constantly being pumped right into our hands. But before we get started though, are you getting ganked in your own lane, constantly demolished? Well, don't worry because we've got you covered. Pro Guides is the number one proven way to quickly level up your League of Legends skills. Whether you are looking for tier lists, champion guides, coaching, or courses from your favorite pro players, Pro Guides is where you'll find them. Even players like Nightblue, Bunny Fufu, and Loco Doco support Pro Guides. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link to start improving right now. And with all that being said, let's get started. First up, one thing I want to talk about is how to look at the game. In a way, it's very similar to fighting games. If you look at League like you look at a fighting game, it becomes much easier. Essentially, you're going to pick a unique character that can usually use four moves. This is simple in comparison to fighting games where you can have an assortment of different basic attacks along with strings into special moves. League basically automates all of this and you have one type of attack alongside your four special moves. Aside from some fundamental concepts like farming macro play and understanding the meta, the basics of League are you pitted against your opponent. You both have your strengths and weaknesses, and it's up to you to understand what those are. Some characters have super long range but are weaker when put up close into close quarter combat. Others excel at fist fights up close, we're looking at you set, but struggle to reach their targets to begin with. Just like in a fighting game, you have to identify what your goals are and what your opponent's goals are. Your playstyle should heavily revolve around cutting off options that are good for your opponent while simultaneously trying to set up options that are good for you. When you see this game in this light, it feels like a big part of it is much simpler than I first realized. The second thing to take into consideration is how much numbers mean. Things like champion stats, win rates, and optimization are core elements of the game. However, it's almost ironic that the most important calculation you have to utilize is probability. How the best players climb and consistently stay near the top of the ladder is always taking into account higher percentage plays. By consistently making choices that are most likely to reward them, they can play well in nearly all of their games. If you think about it logically, if you're always going for risky plays that could come down to a coin flip, you're probably going to win half your games and lose half of them. This chaotic variance isn't going to lead to what your ultimate goal should be, which is consistent victories. Instead, going for a more stable approach should allow you to consistently outperform your direct opponent and, as a result, then win more games than you lose. Tons of these high percentage plays are going to rely on your understanding of macro play. Things like not following your enemy when they're stronger than you, split pushing instead of randomly running it down mid, and understanding which fights you need to be at and where they are will lead you to improving and seeing that victory screen more often. Another huge thing that we've come to understand is that macro play is much more important than micro play for climbing. Especially for lower elo players, making the right decisions will ultimately yield better results. While you can consider outplaying your opponent and winning your 1v1 to be paramount to a victory, I think it's probably more valuable to know that you can even go in for a fight to begin with. Brain over brawn is absolutely true to a big extent in leak. You definitely can't discredit microplay and mechanics entirely, but in my opinion the best approach is to focus on improving your macroplay first, while also simultaneously on the side practicing your mechanics. You should be able to identify your main overall weaknesses from a macro level and then have a micro list of stuff to improve on. You need to dedicate more time to studying and analyzing the game as a whole and focus on the bigger picture rather than figuring out whether or not you can flash something at the perfect pixel time. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't have even been in that situation to begin with. A good thing to equate this to is a sport like playing soccer. Microplay is essentially your ability to handle the ball, how much power you can put behind your kick, and your footwork. The stuff that you need to play the game, stuff that you're always working on all the time, whether you know it or not. Macro play is more like understanding what the best move is in each situation. You need to analyze your opponent, understand where their weaknesses lie, and think about how one of your shots can eventually lead to you scoring. 
You can even put it like this. You could be the best natural power striker in the world. You could have the strongest leg and the most accuracy with your foot. But if you don't know when, where, and how to get into position to even make a shot to begin with, if your really strong and powerful shot is a bad shot, then guess what? It's a bad shot. The next point I want to make is that you should always be adapting, and this also counts during a game as well and in between every single game. Over time, the game changes, trends change, and the overall skill level of players changes. If you're the type of person who needs to have certain things be a certain way, who needs order or simply hates variance, honestly, League is not the right game for you. Because every game is different, and there are an infinite number of variables that can present themselves in a unique fashion. One game, you'll have enemies that play really aggressive and try to 1v2 every fight because they're confident or maybe stupid. Other times, you're going to have enemies that are playing super passive and you might even get camped. And still yet, other times you'll have your team playing around you and other times your team will ignore you. The best players can adapt to every unique situation. You always have to adapt to the meta. Even if you're one tricking a champion, you do need to be constantly optimizing your play around what's strong and what's not. Find ways to play differently. See what runes or items other people are building and always be ready to either innovate or keep your eyes peeled for those who will. The best example that I can give you guys from my own perspective is the idea of the Riven versus Darius matchup. I play a lot of Riven and three years ago, I would have never banned Darius in any game that I ever played. I always thought that the Riven versus Darius matchup was very Riven favored because you can easily Q or E inside of his Q and he doesn't get the healing or good damage. However, in Season 9 and Season 10, most Darius players have officially adapted to taking Ghost and Bone Plating, which means that in some of these matchups, Riven vs Darius, I lose most of the time. This means that if I'm very first pick and I want to lock in Riven, I might heavily consider throwing out a Darius ban. I think it's pretty favored for Darius these days, even though three years ago I would have never ever guessed that that would be the case. League changes all the time, metas change all the time. Three years ago, either Darius would take Ignite or take Teleport. Now they almost all take Ghost and usually run me down. Off the same notion of constantly adapting, one valuable thing to know is that you are always improving. Whether you know it or not, or even if your progress might seem slow, you are always getting better at the game. The other side of that coin is that so is everybody else. That's the fundamental foundation of any competitive match or any competitive game. Everyone is trying to improve and be better than their adversaries. The reason that I mention this is that a lot of people, including myself, feel tilted or discouraged when we can't visually see our own improvements. Give yourself a break and understand that it's not easy to improve because you have to improve more than how much others are. Work hard, but don't make excuses for yourself. You can even feel better about your own accomplishments once you've achieved them. You can never grow complacent with this game. This game is a race. It's a marathon. If you start slacking, you're going to fall behind. We all need breaks, whether or not it's for our mental sanity or because real life gets in the way. However, you still need to stay updated and be ready to jump back in when you're ready to play again and able to play again. And that's because a lot of other people are constantly doing the same. Another huge thing to know about this game is that experience is so valuable. If you have the confidence to make a play, knowing how to approach a situation optimally, and being able to make a split second decision, all of that comes from experience. A lot of these things are not things you can pick up from a textbook. Well, that's also because this is just a video game at the end of the day. You're going to have to grow and learn from experience. Let time and hard work build you up to be a calm, wise, and confident player who knows what to do in every situation. If you are able to see losses as a part of the growth process, and you don't let them bring you down, the feeling of losing feels bad, but understanding that every great had countless losses that molded them into the legends that they became. With that said, you need to learn from every single game. If you want to improve and get better, take something out of each and every game that you play. Learn something new, think about your decisions, or even just practice your mechanics that way you don't mess up something again. You should also never underestimate the effectiveness of watching others play. You don't have to watch streams. Watching replays or VODs of better players is a great study tool and even a quick shortcut to improving. These guys have put in the work, experimented, and taken the losses that they've needed to. Think about pros, streamers, or high elo players as your wise old role models. Learn from the examples that they set, pick the parts of their playstyle that you like, and make it a part of your own. You are unique in that you can pick and choose what characteristics you want to adapt from others. As you start to hit higher elo, it's honestly worth watching anyone else who's higher up on the ladder. If you've reached that point, you should be able to watch a replay and absorb enough 
enough relevant information to make it worth your time. Even if the place seems suboptimal, learn what conditions need to be met in order to win a specific matchup. By seeing what needs to happen, you can attempt to force these situations in your future games, and you can also introduce yourself to a different playstyle by familiarizing yourself with how others might play. One more huge part about fundamentals is that they are pretty much everything. While they might not seem important to you at first, if you want to become a consistent player, then you need to have a strong foundation. You must understand the importance of farming, wave management, and macro play. And this is something that even challenger players every single day work on. They always ask themselves, ah, I should have pushed that wave, or oh, maybe I shouldn't have pushed that wave. If you watch a replay of how a pro player picks up as much gold as they can, it will honestly shock you how much better they are at getting gold than you. The game is always changing and always evolving, and what the most optimal play is can really change over time. What won't change though are these fundamentals. You'll always need to be good at farming and exercise your critical thinking skills in order to make the best plays. Another point worth making is that League is not a game decided by you alone. While you could have a huge influence anywhere on the map, you are going to have to rely on your teammates at some point. If you're playing against players of equal skill, it only makes sense that everyone needs to pull their weight. All you can do is make it easier for your teammates to do that. Sometimes you cannot win games alone, and that's actually quite natural. You have to look outside of your own lane. Winning only your lane and trying to 1v9 is not always going to work. Trust me, I've tried. In the grand scheme of macro play, you need to be able to take certain points of information across every single role and know what to do with them. I think Dopa's quote about this game is pretty important to understand. He always says the role of mid lane is to help your jungler, and the reason is because you have the quickest access and you can easily move with them throughout the map. If your jungler's behind, you're behind. And if that doesn't really set in for you, think about that. Dopa, who is arguably the best player in the world, tells you that your job as a mid laner is to make sure your jungler is set up for success. This is another big example of why macro is so important and more important than micro. You need to be able to determine the highest percentage play from the get-go and then develop a plan. Finally, the last big thing that we've learned after spending so much time with League of Legends is that you should play smarter, not harder. Just because you're putting in one more hour and one hour after one hour after one hour doesn't mean that you will automatically be better than players who aren't. If you've ever heard the term, practice doesn't make you perfect, perfect practice makes you perfect, well, that's exactly what that quote means. Make sure that your time is well spent. You must be able to self-reflect, think about your flaws and points where you need to grow as a player, and then make a mental effort to improve in those areas. You can only improve if you work on your weaknesses, and this will often be better time spent than working on things you already know how to do. League depends on your ability to learn and retain information. Don't play while you're tilted. Take a break and de-stress. Your mind isn't functioning at 100% if you're so focused on all the things that went wrong or if you're hung up on your own self-imposed disappointment. This also means that if you're not in a passable condition, you might be hurting your own growth. Those nights where you sleep only 4 hours or times when you're sick throwing up every meal won't be times where you can fully engage yourself mentally. If you're not able to take care of yourself both physically and mentally, then you're never going to make improvements in your real life or in your League of Legends gameplay. That might be a bit anecdotal, but what I really mean to say is that I improved a lot when I started taking care of myself and focusing on my self-improvement. Anyway guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you check out ProGuides.com as well as our YouTube channel for more informational content to always help you guys improve. Good luck on the Rift and get out there climb in Season 10.